We are talking about freeze patterns. So a freeze pattern is a table of numbers. The rule of the game is we start with the row of ones. Then we'll have more interesting rows, but eventually we want to end up with the row of ones again. So I will do that. Okay, so uh, there is one parameter in uh, what we are doing, the number of rows, one, two, three, four here. So I will say four rows. And now I will uh, put some numbers in the first row and I will start fill out this uh, table. There is only one rule. The rule is that whenever you see a small diamond like this, the product of these two numbers minus the product of these two numbers must be always one. W E minus N S is always one. That's the rule. Okay, what I will do, I'll put some random numbers. Of course, they are not random, but at this point, you're not supposed to understand what they are in the first row. And actually, the row is infinite, so I put the seven numbers and then I repeat them. So it's seven periodic. Okay, so it should be one, three, and so on. So now we are in business using this diamond rule. We can start to fill out this table. I will do it myself, but uh, Brady, please watch me. Let's see what should be here. The number here times one, should be one less than this product. So three minus one, this should be two. Let's see, one times three minus one times two is one. Perfect. Next one, here, six minus one, five, this should be five. Three times two, six, one times five, five, six minus five, one. Correct. Okay, here, two times two, four. I put three here, checking two times two, four minus one times three, three, four minus three, one. Okay. Okay, here, one, two minus one. Here, three, four minus three. Here, well, this is a big one, seven. Four times two, eight minus seven, one. Here to one, one, one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this will also repeat because the first row repeats with period seven. So the next one should be two. So, so far it's been good. We got nice, we got integers, no fractions, nothing. Common. Yes, I want to point out that a small miracle has already happened. So if you look at this rule, this compass rule, uh, if you know three of these numbers, you can always solve for the remaining one. For example, suppose you know W, E, and N, and you want to solve for S. So what is S? S is W, E minus one over N. We subtract and we divide. So there is no chance in general that we'll stay within positive integers. Uh, we divide, so in principle, there should be fractions. Yeah, what we should expect in general, if we put uh, rational numbers in the first row, Everything inside should be rational. But I put positive integers and so far I stay within positive integers. That's already uh, strange. All right, so let's uh, do hard work. Uh, what should we put here? 10 minus one divided by three, three. 10 minus nine. Uh, what should we put here? 15 minus one over two, seven. Here, three minus one, that's one. Here, two. Here, 21 minus one over four, five. 7 minus 1, 6 over 2, 3. Here, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, it should be periodic, so the next one must be 3. The miracle continues. The miracle continues, you are right. And um, you won't be surprised that it will continue to the end. So two more miracles we expect. Uh, we expect positive integers in this row, and we expect this ones to satisfy the compass rule. OK, so uh, let me do it a little faster. Uh, that will be 4. That will be two, that will be one, that will be three, uh, two, I guess, uh, two, and uh, one. And it should be periodic, so the previous one, just like this one. And finally, I hope it all works. Four minus three, one, eight minus seven, one, 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 one. Yes. So you filled the sandwich perfectly, <laughs> you only used integers. Uh, right, so you start to wonder what's going on. Did you choose magic numbers at the start? Well, certainly, certainly the numbers were not random. If you change anything at all randomly, it will break completely. The secret uh, has a name, it's a theorem. It's due to two famous mathematicians, uh, one of them unfortunately not with us, another alive, Coxter and Conway. John Conway, uh, who is a character in your movies. I'm not going to worry anymore, ever again. I was going to study whatever I thought was interesting. So the theorem explains this phenomenon and actually 
gives a complete description, complete classification of free pattern which consists of positive integers. So again, I remind uh, everyone that uh, there is a parameter here, the number of uh, non-trivial rows. Here, this number is four, but in principle, it can be 100 and any anything else. So the theorem is not one theorem, but infinitely many theorems, one for each uh, parameter. To explain what's going on, I need to draw a polygon, which will have seven sides. I will partition this heptagon into triangles. I will triangulate it by its diagonals. I will draw this diagonal and this diagonal and maybe this one and possibly this one. Okay, so now we have five triangles which make this heptagon and I will write numbers at every vertex and the number is the number of adjacent triangles. So for example, this vertex has exactly one triangle adjacent to it, so I write one here. This vertex has four triangles, so that is four. This one has two, one, three, two, and two. Okay, now we have seven numbers. If you examine this first non-trivial row, you will recognize these numbers starting with this one, I guess. One, three, two, two, one, four, two. And then we repeat it. Okay? So, so this shape gave you your numbers? Yes, exactly. And the brilliant, beautiful theorem of Coxeter and Conway says that this miracle will happen every time. Given an end gone, we triangulate it by diagonals any way we want. It's an interesting question how many ways. I'll say something about that. And we put uh, the numbers of uh, triangles adjacent to every vertex around uh, the polygon. And now we create the first seed row, which will be n periodic. Here it was n was seven. And we put these numbers in the row uh, with period n. And then we start to fill out our uh, table using the compass rule. So the claim is that after n minus three non-trivial rows, which all consist of positive integers, will again have row ones. So that's when you get back to the ones after exactly. n minus three. N, n minus three, yes. So that's the way to construct a free pattern consisting of positive integers of width n minus three. And the theorem is that they all are obtained this way. So it's a one to one correspondence. If we start with the square, this gives us period four in horizontal direction and width one. Pentagon gives us five periodic uh, pattern uh, with two, hexagon six periodic with three, uh, hep heptagon you already saw, but you can go uh, to higher, well, probably there is not enough room for here, but it works for every n. Maybe we should start with a square. There are exactly two ways to triangulate it by diagonals. This is one way and this is another way. And although one is obtained from another by rotation, we consider them as different. So there should be two different freeze patterns of period four and with one corresponding to these numbers, which are one, two, one, two, and two, one, two, one. Not very interesting, but it works. Reality check. Pentagon has five different triangulations by diagonals. They all look the same because the numbers which we write form the same sequence, three, one, two, two, one. But again, we consider this triangulation is different. So there are five ways to do it. So two ways here, five ways here. Maybe for complete record, we should put triangle, which has only one triangulation, which you don't need to do, it's already there. And the numbers, of course, are one, one, and one. Hexagon. Hexagon already takes some work. So this is one possibility. This is a different uh, kind of pattern. I guess there is one other combinatorial pattern like so. That's going to start giving us quite different numbers, isn't it? Uh, that is correct. If you are willing to believe me, the number will be 14 here. And actually, this sequence, one, two, 5, 14. This is a famous sequence which you can find everywhere. These are Catalan numbers. 
And uh, they are all over mathematics, all over combinatorics. There are many, many, many interpretations. This is just one of the most common ones. Sure, the next one, I guess, is 42. And this is a heptagon? This should be heptagon, yes, indeed. So does that mean, as, as our polygons get bigger, they, they'll give us different families of our freeze seeding numbers? That is correct, yes. The first uh, row will depend uh, on n, as in n gone, so it will be n periodic, and on the triangulation. Different triangulations give us uh, different seed uh, rows. So but if I want to make a four-rowed sandwich here, okay. one of these four-row sandwiches, obviously I have to use a heptagon. Correct. But I will have different ways to see that depending on how I triangulated my head. Exactly right, exactly right. So uh, in this example, we chose one particular uh, triangulation, but for example, you can choose one of the diagonals, let's say this one, erase it and replace, for example, by this one. And that will be a different free spread and different triangulation. The numbers will change as well. This will always work? No, for every triangulation it will always give me freeze numbers that will... This will always work, uh, work and uh, this is the only uh, thing which will work. So the theorem is that if you want a freeze pattern consistent of positive integers, you should do this and they all will be obtained this way. So there's no chance that I could devise a sequence that won't come from a triangulation? Absolutely not, work. absolutely not. Wow. You don't want to see the proof, but it's, it's a theorem, so it has a proof at 100%. Certain, yes. This is amazing. It's amazing, but you, it takes two geniuses, you know, Coxeter and Conway. It's not just any random <laughs> pair of mathematicians. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Maybe I should say a few words about the place uh, all the subject um, occupies in contemporary mathematics. So when uh, Coxeter and Conway came up with their result and when Conway introduced uh, freeze patterns, it seemed like a marginal subject in some sense. I mean, there are many beautiful things in mathematics which do not belong to mainstream. Fortunately for the subject, fortunately for all us, uh, now it's really mainstream. So there is a new, relatively new, uh, theory called theory of cluster algebras, and uh, this is about 20 years old. And uh, these freeze patterns occupy a very honorable position in this uh, theory. It's uh, one of the main examples. So they're very much studied nowadays, and they're very popular. If you Google the subject, you'll see many, many scientific papers on the subject. Uh, so the intuition of Coxeter and Conway proved itself excellent. They recognized the beauty and now it's important too. <laughs> to see even more from this interview, including the famed lightning bolt in freeze patterns, have a look at our extra footage channel, number file two. There'll be a link on the screen and in the description. This video was filmed at the Mathematical Sciences Research Institute, or MSRI. If you'd like to find out more about MSRI, have a listen to our podcast episode with the director of the Institute, David Eisenbud. Again, links are on the screen and down in the description.